Jeff Ben Davis here to talk a little bit about one of those modes in your Wolf convection steam oven that's uh, something a little bit different, not just for cooking immediately, but for preserving and canning and all that kind of stuff. The Wolf convection steam oven can do a remarkable job if you're really into doing your own preserving. Maybe you have a garden at home that you like to uh, put up your um, your fresh produce at the end of the season. This is a great way to save yourself the trouble of having to boil the water on the stove and just do everything in your convection steam oven. So as an example for that today, we're going to make um, a spicy brown mango mustard, and then we're going to can it in the CSO. So I'm going to walk you through the whole process of making the mustard itself, and then we'll put it in the jars, we'll prepare the jars, and have it ready to go. So it's really a very simple process uh, when you start. Um, we're just going to start with some coarsely ground brown mustard seeds. And we're just going to put those in a large bowl. And then we're going to add an equal amount of just a good yellow mustard powder, um, whatever you like to use. But this is the same amount. And this recipe makes 12 four-ounce jars. So you could put them in larger jars, smaller jars, whatever you like. Um, but this will do that for you. All right. So we've just kind of blend those together just a little bit just to get them mixed up. And then we're going to wet that down with a mixture of a number of things. Now, the, the great thing about mustard is you can sort of control the heat, um, certainly by what you add to it, but also by how long you let it sit um, and just um, go with the uh, the sort of, I don't want to say it's a marin, but it's like a blooming process to get that mustard um, opened up. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a puree here in our wolf blender, and we're going to start with um, just some cold water. And then to that, we're going to add some turmeric, some honey, just got a little bit of honey to put in there. So again, you can make it as sweet or as savory as you like. The honey is completely up to you. You could also use agave nectar, a little bit of sugar if you'd like. Got some kosher salt, gonna add that in there as well. And then the last thing we've got are just some frozen mango chunks. Um, and we're gonna pop those in there. I like the frozen ones only because it's they almost always have a little more flavor. You're not guaranteed with a fresh mango that you're going to get a really ripe, flavorful mango in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a puree out of this in the blender. Just set it back here, and then we're just going to give it a shot. And you want to make it nice and smooth so that you don't have any chunks of mango in your mustard. So probably about 30 seconds pureeing time just to get it nicely blended. And again, if you don't want to use mango, you could use some other fruits if you'd want, or you can omit the fruit altogether and just use the water, the turmeric, a little bit of salt, and then the honey as well. All right, so now we've got a nice, smooth puree of all of those ingredients. Take that, and we're going to add this. To our bowl of all the mustard. Just pour that in there. Make sure you get it all. And then just give that a good stir so you can wet everything down. Just get it really well mixed and blended. Don't worry, it'll thicken a little bit over time. So don't worry if it looks a little thin at the beginning. That's okay. So now the longer you let this mixture sit, the more intense the mustard will get. So if you want a really intense hot mustard, let it sit for a couple of hours at room temperature. Um, that's going to give you a more intense spiciness to your mustard, um, but that's completely up to you. You have a choice. I usually let it sit for a minimum of about 10 minutes if you don't want it to be too hot. Um, but again, if you want to make it spicier, just let it sit a little bit longer. And what we can do is while we're letting this sit, we can get our jars ready to go into the convection steam oven so we can have those ready for um, loading up in just a minute. So what we've got is our perforated tray for the um, for the convection steam oven right here. And we've put our 12 small four ounce jars face up on the perforated tray. So we've got them all ready. You know, these are brand new. So they're I mean, or if you're reusing some jars, make sure you run this through the dishwasher and that they're washed. But you definitely want to put them into the CSO so that you can get them ready and sterilized for um, putting your mustard in or whatever else you're going to put inside it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the convection steam oven now, and we're going to show you where 
you can do this. So what we've got in the oven, we've got our solid tray in the rack position one. Here's our, our tray with our jars. We're going to put that in rack position two. And then to access this function, you're going to hit the more button, which is right here in the lower left corner. You're going to scroll over until you get to the sanitize uh, function and then touch your enter button. And now you have your choices in your sanitizing button. First one is if you're going to sanitize some baby bottles. But the second one is preparing jam jars. Now make sure that when you are doing this process that your reservoir is full um, of water. It's going to take a fair amount of steam to get everything worked out. But now we're just going to um, going to do prepare jam jars. We're going to hit enter. It tells you which rack position. Um, we're going to, it's going to be about 13 minutes of intense steam um, to get those jars sanitized and ready to go. So let's just get that started and underway. And while the jars are being sterilized and ready to prepare for adding the mustard to it, we're going to let our mustard then cure and bloom and bring out the flavor. So um, we'll be back in just a second. And we'll show you how to fill and process those jars. All right. So we're back and our jars are just finishing the sterilization process. Uh, process to get them ready for filling and let's just finish up our mustard now it's fit for about you know 10 15 minutes here and it's gotten nice and thick and you can see how beautiful the consistency is and we only have one last thing we need to add to it we're going to add some good white wine vinegar you could use cider vinegar whatever you'd like but you just want to add that nice acidic component to your mustard and then just stir that in so it's nicely blended, and that's all you have to do. You don't need to let it sit again once it's blended in like this. It's ready to be put into the jars and then being preserved in the convection steam oven so it's sealed up nice and tight so you can store them for up to a year is uh, really the, the best, best time frame to kind of limit yourself to is about one year. So now we've got that all blended in, and we're just coming to the end of the cycle on our sterilization process for the jars and if for any reason you get a little bit uh, caught behind and you need to uh, delay filling the jars just leave the jars in the warm convection steam oven while you're doing whatever you need to do um, you can just leave them there it'll be nice and safe um, in there and so now our timer is going off we've reached the end of the cycle we touch the enter button to quiet that and you'll see some steam a little bit come out of the CSO and now we've got our jars all ready to go. And remember, these are going to be very hot. So just be very careful when you're bringing them over to your workspace. All right. So here we have the nice hot jars. Got our mustard here. Um, what you want to make sure you have is a nice clean towel with a moistened edge for just wiping down the, uh, the sides of the jars as you fill them. Just be careful. They're going to be very hot. You can wait you know, for a few minutes, but you want to fill them up, leave a little bit of head space at the top of the jar. I mean, that can be anywhere from about a quarter to a half an inch. Um, but generally speaking, you want to leave about that much room in the top of each jar. All right, so all of our jars are filled. Now you take your wet towel, come back and just gently wipe the edges of all the jars. Just make sure they're completely clean. There's no mustard running down the outside or are sitting top on the top of the jar because that'll interfere with the sealing process. We want to make sure these are nice and clean so that we'll get a really nice tight seal and it'll last a long time without having to worry about it and so we can keep it in our pantry. So you want to wipe them all down. Once they're wiped down like that and you have them nice and clean, you can affix the lids to the top and you just want to screw the lid on so it's just finger tight. You don't need to go super, super tight. Just put it on there and just kind of Spin it down gently so it sits and just it's just like that. And so then it's ready to go. So let's just finish up all of our jars, get them ready to put into the processing for the CSO. So again, when you're getting to this stage, you're going to need to make sure that um, you have a full tank um, in your convection steam oven. You want the water to be all the way up to the top because it's going to take a lot of steam for the processing of these, and it saves you the trouble of having to bring a pot of water to the boil on the stove and then immerse the jars in it and let them sit there and process. This works really, really nicely um, for getting you a nice tight seal and safe seal on your preserves, jams, jellies, mustards, canned fruit, whatever it might be that you want to put into a jar, 
can easily do it here in the convection steam oven. It saves you all that trouble. So here we're just getting to the last couple, and then we'll get them ready to go into the oven. A little bit of space. So you can see there's a little bit of space between each one of the jars on the perforated tray. All right, so now we're going to head back over to the convection steam oven, and we'll get that in there. Here we go. So again, same positioning, rack position two. Pop that in there. Again, in the more button, we're going back to that sanitize button right over here. And once we touch on sanitize, we're going to scroll to the very last choice, which is preserve jam. It's going to tell us we're only going to be able to do one rack at a time. It's going to be half an hour of good hot steam to get those jars ready to go. And now we're off and running and getting our jars preserved. We'll bring back, we just, we'll bring you back in just a few minutes. So we'll do the, the final, the final preparations on the jars and just show you what to do. Right. Okay. So now we're back. Processing is finished. Timer's going off, ready to take them out, let them sit and finish. Okay, so we're just going to hit our power button to kill that. Open up. See so lots of steam come out. Just very carefully remove them from the oven. Could be some collected water on the tray or on the tops of the jars. Just going to take them over here and set them next to the sink. So here we have it. I've just laid out a clean towel on the countertop. Just going to take our jars and just gently transfer them, carefully transfer them over, and let them cool down. And usually, let them cool overnight before you. Before you top them with the, uh, or you finish finish um, sealing the, the jar, the, the the ring on the lid, you just screw that down tightly after they've cooled overnight. Um, so once they've cooled, we can then store them. And then what I normally like to do is take a clean towel, come back and just kind of wipe off the tops. And just make sure that um, once you've got them all in the jars and they're dry and ready to go, just take a good permanent marker and then right on the lid just write today's date so that you know exactly when you put these into the jars so you can basically know exactly when they would might expire so you can see how easy it is to uh, to do some preserving in the convection steam oven uh, works really really easily um, very very clean very very efficient um, I've never had a steel break in over two years of preserving products in the convection steam oven. I've never had one seal fail me um, during the course of that time. So um, thanks for, for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, please uh, look, you know, you can contact us here at Roth Living and make sure you avail yourself to all the other videos that here on the our, our Instagram channel and our YouTube channel so you can learn more about wonderful things you can do with all your Sub-Zero Wolf and Co. products.